welcome to the World of Wrestling Podcast. I'm Slim. Kyle not here again. Uh, we're going to start off with Raw. And before we actually start with Raw, uh, Michael Cole's on commentary this week. Uh, Tom Phillips is off. They don't say what, like why, but they just say he's off. Um, yeah. So, Raw this week starts with Randy Orton. Randy says that last week, uh, he, he said that he would, uh, jump through whatever hoops he needed to, so he could face Drew at Clash of Champions. Uh, he also says that he's facing Keith Lee later, and the more Keith faces Orton, the more of a chance Keith has of getting kicked in the head. Randy then says he doesn't think Drew will make it to Clash. Uh, Orton then shows what he did to Drew. Orton then says that if Drew can't compete at Clash, then he should have the title handed to him. And then he gets cut off by an ambulance siren, and Drew gets out and storms to the ring, claymores Orton before beating him up and leaving. We then see the Hurt... Well, earlier in the day, we see the Hurt business, and uh, they beat up a janitor. Backstage, Adam Pearce tells McIntyre to leave the premises. Drew says he has done what he needs to do, so he'll leave. Then we get the Hurt Business vs. Apollo Crews, Ricochet, and Cedric Alexander. During Cedric's entrance, the Hurt Business attack him. Uh, During the match, Cedric attacks Ricochet and hits the lumbar check on Apollo. Decent match, more of an angle than a match. Hurt Business win by pinfall after Shelton hits pay dirt on Apollo. And I've got here that it seems like Cedric has joined the Hurt Business. More on that later. Next we get the Street Profits vs. Angel Garza and Andrade with Zelina Vega. As the Profits come out, we see what happened last week in the Profits vs. Garza and Andrade match when Retribution showed up. Garza leaves Andrade high and dry, which allows Profits to win after Dawkins hit Cash Out and Ford hit from the heavens. Decent match, once again, more of an angle than a match. Post-match, Cesaro and Nakamura come out, and they say that they think of the Street Profits... Hang on. When they think of uh, the Street Profits, they think of basketball, cups, and pretty much anything other than defending the Raw Tag Titles. Cesaro and Nakamura then challenge the Profits to a Champions vs. Champions, champion champions match next week. Profits accept. We then see our truth with Lil Jimmy at a restaurant when Dessert shows up and it has a ninja under the cart. Truth then chucks his baby to Lil Jimmy, who drops it, and Truth fights off Tozawa and his ninjas to escape with the 24-7 title. Then we get Peyton Royce vs. Billy Kay. Good match. Peyton won by pinball after hitting the final reckoning, which it's not what she's calling it. Uh, it's just what it is. Um, Dustin Rhodes does it in AEW. That's where I got the name from. Instead of going the suplex neck breaker thing, I just figured I'd call it Final Reckoning. We then have a look at what happened last week in the match between Dominic and Rollins. We then see the Mysterio family showing up and Murphy appears behind them, just way in the background, so don't worry about it. Then we see what happened at the start of the show between Orton and McIntyre, because we can't remember it, obviously. We're dumb. Uh, then we get an in-ring interview with the Mysterio family. Ray says he... Uh, hang on. Ray says he isn't sure when his torn tricep will be healed, but he can't wait to get back in the ring. Ray also says that Dominic knows what he needs to do in his match against Murphy later. Murphy says that Dominic that it's Dominic's fault that Rollins doesn't want anything to do with him. Murphy also says that the ultimate sacrifice will be to end Dominic's career before it begins. So he challenges Dominic to a street fight, and Dominic accepts. Backstage, Adam Pearce is telling Nia and Shana that they both have to fight the Riot Squad separately later, when Drew walks past, and he says he has to return the ambulance. We then get Asuka and Mickie James vs Natalia and Lana. Before Natalia and Lana come out, we see what happened last week between Asuka, Mickie, Natalia and Lana. 
Okay match, Asuka and Mickey won by submission when Asuka locks in the Asuka lock on Lana and Mickey takes Natalia out on the outside with a Mick kick. Then we see what happened earlier with the Hurt Business, Cedric, Ricochet and Apollo. Backstage, Cedric says that he is ready to confirm what happened on the VIP lounge. After MVP and Lashley leave, Shelton tells Cedric that if he's trying to play them, then Shelton will find out and will teach Cedric why they're called the Hurt Business. We then get the VIP lounge with the Hurt Business, who initiate Cedric. Uh, Cedric says that he was going broke working with Apollo and Ricochet, and he doesn't want to be beaten down every week, especially for someone else's championship opportunity. Viking Raiders, Ricochet and Apollo then come out and they attack the Hurt Business. Then we get the Hurt Business versus the Viking Raiders, Ricochet and Apollo Cruz. Pretty good match. The Hurt Business won by pinfall after Cedric hit a big Michinoku driver on Ricochet, who kicked out at three. The ref still called for the bell, so officially they won. Uh, during the match, Ivar got injured. Not I don't think anything has been announced for what he is actually injured with. Um, they've just said that he's, yeah, injured. Uh, backstage interview with Drew, who says that he grabbed the wrong phone. Would you believe it? And he can't find an exit. But as, as soon as he gets the right phone and finds an exit, he'll leave, yeah. We then see what happens last week between Owens, Black and Orton. Then Shane shows up to Raw Underground and Owens also shows up. Then we get Randy Orton versus Keith Lee. Pretty good match. Owen, uh, Orton won by DQ after McIntyre claymored him. During the match, Lee reversed an RKO by standing up and holding Orton's weight, which was cool. Uh, we then get Raw Underground and Black beats someone. Then we get Black versus Owens, which doesn't end at this point. Um, I should also mention, they'll say, oh, we're just waiting on Kevin Owens, except Kevin Owens was the one that showed up first. But whatever. Uh, Adam Pearce apologises to Randy for Drew. Then we get Shayna Baszler versus the Riot Squad. Uh, good match. Riot Squad win after Nia distracts Baszler, and Liv rolls her up. We then go back to Raw Underground, where Owens vs. Black is still going on. Uh, we still don't finish it. Uh, then we also get Nia versus the Riot Squad. During the match, Retribution shows up on the Tron, and they say that WWE has wronged them, and they will destroy everyone and everything. Backstage interview with Ray and the Mysterio family, and Ray says that he will be in Dominic's corner. Back to Raw Underground, and Black and Owen, uh, Black and Owens, was, yeah, is still going. Baba Tunde takes out both Owens and Black after Owens sends Black into Bavatunde. Then Owens pushes him to get to Black. Um, so, yeah, the whole we've been doing this all night thing ended with somebody else winning. Backstage interview with Randy Orton, who doesn't say anything before being attacked by McIntyre again and gets claymored again. We then look at every Claymore kick Drew has hit on Randy tonight. That makes three, too. So. Three punts for three Claymores. It's fair. Main event time, and it's a street fight between Murphy and Dominic with the, with the Mysterio family, who all come out with kendo sticks. Really good match. Dominic won after he and Ray tied him up in the ropes. And all four members of the Mysterio family hit him with kendo sticks until he verbally submitted. Post-match, the Mysterio family continued to hit Murphy with the kendo sticks to close the show. Moving on to AEW Dark, and this week's Dark has seven matches. Which is good. Um, it, it's, a, it's a step closer to, like, you know, back to how it should be. Uh, first match is Sean Legacy versus Will Hobbs. Good match. Will Hobbs wins by pinfall after hitting the Oklahoma Stampede. Then we get Brian Cage versus Tony Donati. Squash match. Cage wins by pinfall with the Weapon X. After that, it's Griff Garrison versus Angelico. Pretty good match. Angelico won by submission with a reverse figure four plus an ankle lock. Um, 
I guess it was an Indian death lock and an ankle lock. But whatever. I think I wrote that because I couldn't remember what an Indian death lock was. We then have Anna J versus Skylar Moore. Good match. Anna J wins by submission with a rear naked choke. Next up is Lee Johnson versus Eddie Kingston. Good match. Kingston won by pinfall with a spitting back fist. Then we have Sunny Kiss versus Serpentico. Good match. Sunny wins by pinfall with a flipping senton on a standing Serpentico. Main event time, and it's Ricky Starks versus Ben Carter. Really good match. Starks won by pinfall after hitting the Rochambeau. Moving on to AEW Dynamite. And Dynamite this week starts earlier in the day in the parking lot where Tony Schiavone says that Jericho and MJF are arriving and Schiavone says that he wants to talk about the most talked about match from All Out, which both of them think is theirs. Jericho says that MJF was cheated out of... uh, He was cheated at All Out. And MJF says that it's disgraceful that Jericho even had to touch Orange Cassidy. Jericho then says that MJF will win the AEW Championship one day. And MJF says Jericho will win back the AEW World Championship one day. They both then leave in separate directions, calling each other a loser. We then start the show properly with the Lucha Brothers with Eddie Kingston, The Butcher and The Blade versus Jurassic Express with Marco Stunt. Really good match. Jurassic Express win by pinfall after Jungle Boy reverses Phoenix by putting him where Jungle Boy was so Penta hit a Canadian Destroyer on Phoenix. Uh, Jungle Boy then rolled Phoenix up for the three. Post-match, the Lucha Brothers shove each other and Butcher and Blade then break it up and Eddie Kingston gets in the ring and says that everyone needs to stop fighting with each other and he forces the Lucha Bros to shake hands but Penta pushes Phoenix and then they eventually do shake hands properly and Eddie then says that he was never eliminated from the Battle Royal. Jake Roberts and Lance Archer then say that Lance will beat Moxley for the AEW World Championship. Matt Hardy is out next and he begins by thanking everyone. Matt then says that he's expected to make 100% recovery and he is the luckiest man alive. Matt then apologises for what happened at All Out, but now his vendetta with Sammy is over and when he gets back, he's coming for a title. We then look at the Mimosa Mayhem match while Angelico with Jack Evans is coming out for his match against Orange Cassidy. Good match, Orange wins by pinfall with the Orange Punch. Post-match, Santana and Ortiz attack Orange with the baton and the Mab Bowl. Best friends then run Santana and Ortiz off. Chuck Taylor then says that this has to end and challenges Santana and Ortiz to a parking lot brawl, uh, which they're calling a parking lot fight. Trent says that next week they're coming to hurt Santana and Ortiz and to make Trent's mum Sue proud. Backstage, we're meant to have an interview with the Young Bucks, but they don't answer their locker room door. Not us. Their locker room door, not the locker room. Um, But we do have a door. I've got a door. I'm looking at the door right now. It's right there. It's a sliding door, and it's white. Doesn't have a lock on it, but other than that, it's perfect. Um, It does, does make it so that out there, the sound doesn't actually get in here. It's great. There used to be just a sheet there. But we actually got a door. And put the door in. And it works. Uh, anyway, so when they don't open the door, um, Marvez keeps knocking on it. And they eventually do. And they super kick him. Um, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford are out next to reveal who Kip's best man is. And it's revealed to be Myro, which is Rusev. Um, but before it was revealed to be him, some dude called Puff comes out saying he's the best man. Uh, Brian Pillman comes out thinking he's the best man. And then eventually Myro comes out and he says that he spent 10 years in the same house under the same glass ceiling with the same brass ring. So you can take the the brass ring 
and shove it up your ass. He then says that Kip chose him because he's not just a best man, he is the best man, and if you tune into his Twitch, then you will already know that. Quick note, apparently Chris Jericho is the one that fed Rusev the brass ring line, which is pretty cool. Uh, we then have a sit-down interview with Hangman Page, and Hangman says that he's alright but a bit sore, other than that he's good. Tony then digs a bit deeper, and Hangman says that FTR shouldn't be the champs, and it's all his fault. It's his fault that he lost two of his best friends. He then says that he and Kenny will get through it, and together they will regain their tag times. Then we have an ODQ tag team match between Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss versus the Inner Circle, that being Jericho and Hager, with Floyd. Good match, Inner Circle win by pinfall after Hager locks in the head and arm triangle. Uh, Post-match, Jericho gets on the mic and says that the Inner Circle had a shit night at all out, but that's in the past, so now he and Hager are going after the tag titles. MJF is then in his campaign office and he says that Moxley isn't to blame for what happened at All Out. He then fires everyone in his campaign before having a go at Wardlow, who looked like he was going to knock MJF out until MJF went, yeah, but I signed your checks, not Tony Khan. Backstage, Moxley says that nothing is easy and that's proven since he now has to worry about Lance Archer. Mox also says that he is unstoppable and you shouldn't bet against Moxley. We then have FTR and Tully Blanchard in the ring for their celebration. Tully says that FTR are the greatest tag champions in the world. We see a few tag teams in the AEW tag team sort of thing, you know, around the ring. Uh, division, that's what I was looking for, the tag division. Yeah, they're around the ring. Um... FTR says that they are the top guys in AEW and they and they tag hang on. Oh, and they talk shit about all the teams around the ring. Don't know why I've got tag there. Um Jurassic Express then get in the ring and they after they were insulted and then FTR try to jump Jurassic Express but it doesn't work. And so FTR retreat and while on the outside Marco Stunt dumps the Esky on them just what was in it, he didn't actually dump the ASCII, um, and the teams, the other teams around the ring, get in the ring and celebrate while FTR leave. Taz then joins commentary to talk about what happened to Darby, to Darby in the Casino Battle Royal, that was very hard to say for some reason. Darby's music then hits, but it's just Ricky Starks who makes fun of Darby before saying that Darby's reckless, and the next time Darby shows up, Ricky will beat his ass. Then we see what happened in the Tooth and Nail match and the Women's Championship match from All Out. Then we have Tay Conti versus Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero. During the match, we're told that the Bucks have been fined $5,000 each for super kicking Alex Marvez. And we will have an announcement from Cody after the show, which is that he's going to be on some other show. Um, they don't show it on anything, it's just something that I know. Uh, good match, Nyla wins by pinfall uh, uh, with the Beast Bomb. Post-match, Vicky says that they aren't going anywhere. And as Nyla goes to attack Conchi again, Sheeta comes down with the kendo stick to stop Nyla. Then we have a pre-recorded interview with Omega, who says that he felt that he was meant to be a singles guy until he started teaming with Hangman. Omega then says he's going back to being a singles competitor. Completely different to what uh, Hangman said. And also, before we move on, uh, I did forget to mention that it does seem that uh, Tay Conchi injured her knee. Um, even backstage, she was limping on it, but I don't know if that was still just selling. So, yeah. Uh, main event time, and it's Dustin Rhodes versus Mr. Brody Lee for the, uh, he's with four, for the TNT Championship. The whole reason why uh, four is with him is because he is holding the TNT Championship. Match begins before the bell when Dustin attacks Brody during the introductions. They brawl on the outside for a couple of minutes, then they get back in the ring to get the match started. 
Really good match. Mr. Brody Lee won by pinfall after hitting the discus clothesline. Post match, Dark Order come out with QT. Brody then has a go at Colt and sends him to the back, and Uno goes with him. Five and ten then hold Dustin up, and Brody kicks him in the balls. Um, they did have Dustin last longer than Cody. Uh, I've seen that a lot of people were confused by that, but I actually think it works better. Because Dustin is pissed off and, you know, is looking for more of a fight. And I think you would really bury Dustin, like, all of his momentum, if he was to lose quickly. Like, if it was like, they get in the ring, just close line, one, two, three. But that wouldn't work, I don't think. Um, it would just bury him. He wouldn't be... He would be just another dude sort of thing. So I can understand why it went like that. And, yeah, I actually prefer it going like that. So, yeah. Moving on to NXT. And NXT this week starts with the hype package for this week's show. Wade Barrett's on commentary again as well. Uh, we then kick things off with the NXT Championship match between Finn Balor and Adam Cole. Really good match. Balor won by pinfall after hitting an avalanche 1916. Uh, backstage, Rhea says that tonight she will show Mercedes why she's called the Nightmare. Backstage, we see Triple H, William Regal and Adam Cole show Finn Balor respect. And then Balor is interviewed and he says that this is why he returned to NXT. Quick note, Adam Cole did too sweet Finn Balor. Uh, we then see Robert Stone who goes to mess with Shotzi's tank with a baseball bat. But Shotzi shows up and attacks Stone. But Aaliyah sends Shotzi into Eo's photo shoot. And Eo and Shotzi then chase Aaliyah into the ring where they beat her up. And Stone tries to get involved but he's unsuccessful. Shotzi then hits the top rope sent on an Aaliyah. While EO hits the Asai Moonsault on Stone. The two then celebrate and when Shotzi goes to give EO her title. She sort of pulls it away and then EO takes it. We then get Tegan Knox showing up for dinner with the Garganos. Candice and Johnny are arguing because Gargano doesn't want Candice to have Tegan as a friend. And Tegan then shows up and they start talking. We then get more Thatcher's Thatcher, Thatch can training and this week's lesson is about Damien Priest moveset then we get uh, Velveteen Dream versus Ashanti The Adonis which is Tahuti Miles okay match very one sided for Adonis until Dream won by pinfall after poking Adonis in the eye behind the ref's back and hitting the Dream Valley driver post match Kushida attacks Dream from behind when he went to get the mic we then get a video package from Breezango who say they're at the top of the division. During the package, Imperium say that they're going to take the title back next week. And Breezango say they're going to remain the champions. Back to more dinner with the Garganos and it's not going very well. But it looks like Tegan is starting to consider what Candice is saying. Then we get Bronson Reed versus Austin Theory. Really good match. Reed won by pinfall with the Tsunami to the back. Backstage interview with Adam Cole, who says the better man won tonight, and he's disappointed it wasn't him, but it's okay, however. Oh no, it's okay. However, Balor better make sure that Cole doesn't get another shot at the title. Backstage, Mercedes Martinez says she will devour Ripley in their cage match later. Next, we have Roderick Strong with Bobby Fish versus Killian Dane. Good match, Strong won by pinfall with a jumping knee strike. Post-match, Strong and Fish attack Dane, but Maverick comes down with an iron bar and attack Era until Fish takes Maverick out. But Dane runs Era off with the bar. Dane then stares at Drake, but drops the bar and goes to leave until Drake stops him uh, so he could shake his hand. But Dane punches Drake in the face, which was funny. This whole Era, Killian, Dane, uh, Drake, Maverick, uh, rivalry thing is just funny. I love it. 
Um, back to dinner with the Garganos, and Candice and Tegan are toasting, and Candice says she'll be the next NXT Women's Champion, which Tegan takes offence to, which leads to Candice throwing salad over Tegan, Tegan throwing her drink in Candice's face, then tipping a bowl of spaghetti over Johnny's head. Candice then throws something at Tegan, which she ducks, and it goes straight into the TV before she chases Tegan out of the house. Gargano's left standing there going, not the TV. Then we have a hype package for the main event. Backstage interview with Damian Priest, who says Thatcher is ugly, and he tells Thatcher his game plan, and says that he's not going to lose his title in his first defence. Thank God we're not doing predictions for normal NXT, because if we were, I don't know who I would pick, because I do think that Priest would win. However, I can also see Thatcher winning. And, yeah, I don't know. I'm, it's very hard. I don't know. Main event time, and it's Rhea Ripley versus Mercedes Martinez with Robert Stone in a steel cage match. Mercedes comes out with a kendo stick, and then she goes under the ring to get more weapons. Ripley ambushes Mercedes before the match while she's getting weapons. Pretty good match. Ripley won by pinfall after putting Mercedes through a table with an avalanche rip time. Moving on to NXT UK. And this week's NXT UK starts with a big announcement. Which is that we're getting an eight-man tournament to find out who will be the first holder of the NXT UK Heritage Cup. In the tournament, we're going to have Flash Morgan Webster, Noam Dar, Alexander Wolfe, A-Kid, Trent Seven, Dave Mastiff, Joseph Connors, and a mystery competitor. The rules are that the match is competed under um, six three-minute rounds. There are 20-second breaks in between each round. Each round is two out of three falls. Falls are won by pinfall, submission, or countout. The round ends after a fall occurs or the time is up. If you get two falls, you win. Uh, DQ or KO ends the match completely. Whoever leads after six rounds advances in the tournament. And that is your rules. Now, until I read about them, I was sitting there going, well, that's just stupid having the DQ, KO in the match sort of thing. Because you'd think that would just end the fall. And then I realised, hang on, no. It doesn't just end the fall. Because I was thinking of it the same thing. But it's not that it ends the fall, it ends the match. So if you yeah, get DQ'd, then it's not just one fall you've coughed up. It's the match. So, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, we also get confirmed that in two weeks we will get Kaylee Ray defending the NXT UK Women's Championship against Piper Nevin. It's also confirmed that next week Gallus will defend their NXT UK Tag Team Championships against Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams. So yes, as of next week, this is the last week, uh, we're going to have proper NXT UK coverage. Uh, yeah, so like I said, this will be the last week of just sort of running through it, where it will be proper NXT UK coverage starting next week. So, yeah. Uh, moving on to SmackDown. And SmackDown this week starts with a Never Forget 9-11 graphic before we get a recap of what was said last week by Heyman and Reigns, before we see how Jey Uso ended up in the Fatal 4-Way. And how he won to earn his way into the Universal Championship match at Clash of Champions. We then kick the show off with Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. Paul says that what they say is the truth. And after they laid all their cards on the table, Jay ended up winning the Fatal 4-Way. Paul then introduces Jay Uso. Jay thanks Paul because now he gets to compete against Roman. Paul says that it was Roman's idea to have Jay put in the match. Paul just executed. Roman says that Jay doesn't need to thank him because they're blood. Roman then says that he'll whoop Jay's ass at Clash of Champions, just like he whooped their ass when they were younger. 
Corbin then interrupts and says that this is a setup because Roman pulled some strings so he would have Jay as his first opponent. Corbin then says that it makes him sick to see someone abuse their power, which is, you know. Sheamus then shows up and says he agrees with Corbin, and so when he showed Big E where his car was last week, it should have been a triple threat match. Jay then challenges Corbin and Sheamus to a tag match between himself and Roman later. Backstage, Sami Zayn is in the production truck yelling at people because the graphic says Jeff Hardy is defending the Intercontinental title against AJ Styles. But Sami doesn't know how since he's the Intercontinental Champion, not Jeff. We then get Jeff Hardy defending the Intercontinental Championship against AJ Styles. During introdu- in- introductions, Sammy comes out and says that shame on everyone because he's the Intercontinental Champ. Adam Pearce then comes out to get rid of Sammy. AJ attacks Jeff before the match. Decent match, short because the match ends in no contest when Sammy attacks both men. Backstage we see Jay talking to Roman. Then we cut back to ringside where Jeff is leaving but he collapses. Backstage we're told that Jeff is dehydrated, that's why he collapsed. Styles then shows up and says that this all needs to stop. Styles then says that he can uh, he can beat Sammy and Jeff and he doesn't care when or where or what type of match it is but he will prove that he is the rightful Intercontinental Champion. I would say at Clash we're getting a triple threat match. And it will be Sammy versus Jeff versus AJ. And I reckon AJ's going to walk out with the title, just because why not. We then look at what happened on Raw between the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Before we see Cesaro and Nakamura in the Champions Lounge, when the Profits show up and the Profits say that they will keep the price, the place nice and tidy while Cesaro and Nakamura had their match, Plus, they will also get to scout the SmackDown Tag Champs. We then get Cesaro and Nakamura vs. Lucha House Party, that being Kalisto and Grand Metalik, with Lince Dorado. During Lucha House Party's entrance, Kalisto says that he is the leader of the Lucha House Party, and they will win the SmackDown Tag, t- tag Titles. In between the entrances, we see Jeff in the trainer's room, and Sammy comes in, and the two brawl. Lucha House Party win by pinfall after the Prophets show up on the Tron, having a party in the Champions Lounge, which distracted Cesaro and Nakamura, allowing Kalisto to roll Cesaro up. Backstage, Lucha House Party show up to the Champions Lounge to join the party. Bailey's out next to talk about what she did to Sasha last week. Bailey sits on a chair, doesn't say anything, so we see what happened. Bailey then sees, uh, says that she loved what she did to Sasha last week. Bailey then says that she knows Sasha's, Sasha was using her because she was using Sasha. And after last week, Sasha is completely useless to Bailey, so that's why she did it. We then get the number one contenders match for the SmackDown Women's Championship between Alexa Bliss, Tamina, Lacey Evans, and Nikki Cross. As Nikki is coming out, Bailey attacks her with a steel chair. Nikki says she'll be right to go when we come back from break. Uh, during the match, Alexa hits Sister Abigail on Cross on the outside before leaving like she was in a trance. Before hitting that, she did also look like she was in a trance. Good match. Nikki wins by pinfall with a sunset pin on Tamina. Backstage, we see Corbin and Sheamus t- talking in their locker room. Not us. Theirs. It was theirs. It's got nothing to do with us. Other than the fact that I'm reporting it. And uh, then we have Otis with Tucker versus John Morrison with The Miz, who was on commentary. Otis gets his lunchbox back. Uh, Miz then takes the Money in the Bank contract and runs away. Uh... Hang on, where will we? Oh yes, here we are. I'd accidentally done something, and yeah. Uh, Otis wins by pinfall after hitting the Caterpillar and a Vader Bomb. After the break that took place during Otis's entrance, we get another vignette for a female that is getting dressed. And when they first started doing that, which I think was last week, it, I thought it was Carmella. It just seemed like Carmella. 
and this one, like, yeah, this one just sort of almost proves it. However, if you do watch it, uh, you can see a tattoo on them, which is the same as what Carmella has, and it's in the same spot and everything, so I think it might be Carmella. Then we have an update on Big E, which is that on Talking Smack, Xavier Woods will provide an update. Great update, guys. Then we see a welcome banner in the Firefly Funhouse. Backstage, Otis reveals that he had the Money in the Bank contract in a different lunchbox inside the briefcase. And by that, I mean he had it in a different small thing inside of the proper Money in the Bank briefcase. And the one that Miz took didn't have it in there. Then we get a new Firefly Funhouse. Bray says that thanks to Roman, something is missing from the Funhouse. Uh, the new friend to the Funhouse is Pasquale the Parrot, but he doesn't show up because he's dead. Because, well, Bray should have put some holes in the box. However, I do think that if he had it, he would have got it and killed it. Um, Vince Devil then shows up and says that Bray has lost his trust and then says the new special adv advisor to the Funhouse is Wobbly Walrus, who looks like Paul Heyman because Paul Heyman is a walrus. Vince Devil then says that this is such good shit because obviously... Main event time, and it's King Corbin and Sheamus versus Jey Uso and Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. During Jey's entrance, Sheamus and Corbin go after Jey. Roman comes out way late, so he can tag in after Jey could have ended the match. Reigns and Jey win with pinfall after Reigns spears Sheamus. Moving on to 205 Live, and we start the show with... Ashanti the Adonis which like I said is Tahuti Miles versus the Brian Kendrick pretty good match Kendrick wins by submission with the captain's hook post match Kendrick shakes Adonis's hand and tells him that if he ever needs anything to ask then we get Ever Rise versus I don't know they didn't say unless I missed the graphic but I don't think I did I really don't I am um, they didn't say their names on commentary. They didn't do anything like that. So who they were versing is beyond me. Squash match for Ever Rise, who won by pinfall after hitting the elevated lung blower. We then look at what happened in the main event last week when Legato Del Fantasma interfered. Main event time, and it's the Brute Brawlers versus Legato Del Fantasma, that being... Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde with Santos Escobar. During the match, Everise show up to deal with Santos Escobar. Pretty good match. Legato Del Fantasma won by pinfall after Wilde rolled Birch up and hooked the tights. So, yep, yeah, that's uh, it for this week. Um, yeah. So, we still haven't heard anything for Wild Don who is just obviously a big old pussy, because he just, he's, he must be smart, but he's still a pussy, because he won't, he won't face me, so, what a pussy, um, the next lot of predictions will be Clash of Champions, and, uh, they'll be coming up in, well, it's two weeks from Monday, isn't it, so, a week from Thursday. Um, let's see. What else do I have to say? Nothing really. I guess that that's been it for this episode of the World of Wrestling Podcast. Hopefully Carl's back soon. I don't know. I'll talk to him and see what the go is. But for now, he's not here. Uh, hopefully it's soon. Um like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell if you want, don't really care if you do or not, and other than that, goodbye and good night.